Innovation, resilience, agility. It's how Michigan businesses continue to work together to make a difference now and shape the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio. Hey, welcome back for uh, everybody staying up late, either watching hockey or basketball, even a little baseball. Speaking of baseball, Marlins, a little 12-10 start today if you want to get out to the ballpark. Watch a little baseball. They got a chance to take three out of four from uh, Phillies today. Uh, can't say it enough, man. You know, sometimes this is a little old school, but John Birdie's at bat with two outs in the eighth inning was uh, was something I guess only a manager, a hardcore fan, can really appreciate. Um, especially facing a guy that's throwing it ninety eight to ninety nine miles an hour. Fouls off a couple of pitches um, and then gets a big base hit with runners on second and third to, uh, I mean, it's a 2-1 game with two outs there and Birdie comes through with a big hit. Boy, tell you what, he has been a really, really nice utility player for this team to have. Just can run, uh, makes contact, just really kind of an old school player, man. I uh, I really like Really like watching John Birdie play. By the way, 12-10, Pablo Lopez will be pitching, who's been one of the best pitchers on this staff, and they got a chance to get back to 500 today. That's right. They could be jumping. Uh, they, they could be getting on a plane feeling pretty good, uh, getting back to 500 for the first time. It's uh, good good stuff going on there. So, anyway, we got all that, and, of course, we've uh, been all over the big story that's been all over everything. I got to give the Knicks credit. They've been uh, the big story – nationally their comeback last night um and uh madison square garden was just going absolutely crazy derrick rose uh really played great came out started the second half and uh had a had a nice game with 26 points trey young by the way is fantastic that that supporting cast you know lacks a, a little bit but he is really turning into a fantastic player i couldn't have been more wrong by the way I think a lot of people were about him coming out of college. I didn't think he was going to be this good. I didn't either. He is fantastic. I didn't either, but he has worked on it to become one of the better guys in that class. How how crazy is that trade, that guy for Doncic? How, how crazy is that? Is Luka the best player in the, in the oh, game God. right now? <laughs> Jeez. I just I heard someone ask you, that like a few days that. ago on, on ESPN. So now every just... time I, I hate to mention the guy's name because yeah. every time I do, he goes, is he the best player? He's pretty damn good is right he? now. Pretty pretty damn good. There's no question about how good he is. But. Can I ask you that same question you asked uh, Coach Rothstein then, uh, your favorite memory of the Garden? Because I know you've been to a lot of games there, Oh, right? my God. I got to see all those knockdown, drag out, technical foul, Alonzo Mourning, Patrick Ewing, and uh, all the big guys. I was there when uh, the old Florida State quarterback got flipped. Uh, saw one of the – Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward got flipped. Oh, my God. Those were – Honestly, they for games that were like eighty five to eighty two, they're really good games to watch. It was just getting shots off. You go to the basket, you got knocked down hard. You got up, you wanted to fight, or PJ Brown is getting into it, and uh, their guys, and it was just bad blood. It was so good. The Van Gundys are over there screaming, and the Riley Van Gundy relationship at that point. I mean, it was just beautiful, man. Those games are hard to beat. They had good teams. We had good teams. We had guys getting suspended for a game. They had guys getting suspended. Uh, yeah, the Alonzo and Timmy Hardaway team. Oh, my God, those were. I still, I, I, you know, you see that atmosphere there, and I know, again, the Knicks have really crummy ownership, but you would think that would be very attractive if, if a free agent saw that atmosphere. That that's an opening round series. Like, how could you not want to play for that? I mean, that that's tough to turn down. I know they haven't been able to land anyone ever over there, but that that's quite an atmosphere. Remember when they thought Carmelo was going to be able to bring all those players when yeah. they got him? Everybody went, no, not can do that. Stoudemire went there, no, bad knees at that point. Yeah, that's. Uh, it is fun to watch, though. It's good to see the Knicks in this thing, and and uh, I think that series is going to be a lot of fun. That Atlanta New York series should be should go go away. We should be talking about that for a while. 
that thing's got a chance to go seven, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's... I think they'll probably split uh, the uh, the two in it in Atlanta as well. So we've we've got some other big stories, including obviously the Tua Tunga Vailoa story has uh, has been a, a a big story here, coming out from yesterday's interview. Um, if you missed it, uh, we'll, we'll play it again. I know we got a lot of texts coming on it. We're we're going to get to all your texts or as many as as we can. You know what's funny about the text, Joe, is you can clearly you know see where people stand on this thing. Like you you know. You're either a Tua lover or you don't believe in the guy. I mean, there's no, like, middle ground with him at this point, which is kind of amazing because it reminds me of the end with Ryan Tannehill where it was like either you're on board with him or you just think this guy sucks and needs to go. Like, there's no middle ground on Tua right now. Well, we had something new that was said yesterday. And, by the way, you're right. People people that don't like Tua aren't going to like him. And, and the people that like him are well, going to continue to like didn't him. These comments help. And, but – I'm just not used to hearing. You have just the second part, just the second part, the follow-up question by by Omar. Here it is. Actually, what what I'm saying is, I didn't actually know the like the playbook necessarily really really good, and that's on no one else's fault, you know, but my fault. And they they our our play calls were simple when. When I was in, you know, I didn't have alerts and checks, Um, whereas now, you know, feeling more comfortable, you know, I can kind of maneuver my way, you know, through through these things now. Well, that's why we're hoping that uh, two is going to have the big jump here in year two. He needs to. Uh, But, yeah, the playbook thing is just never I I know there's a lot about it's a generic comment like. You know, I didn't spend enough time. I didn't know my playbook well enough. But you're you're thinking, well, that's your only job. Like, especially early on when, when you didn't basically play for the first month and a half of the regular season, you you need to know that playbook, I am sure. And, and he didn't run the same plays. You remember the complaints last year? Everybody remember the complaints? Yeah. Tua ran his offense. Look what he's running. Little dumps. You put Fitzpatrick in there. You're throwing down the middle to, to get sicky. And, and, and people are like, why can't he run the same stuff? Well, he wasn't ready to handle it. Like, Chan Gailey would have gladly given him, if he thought he was capable of doing it after missing, you know, all off season and everything he did, he, he, he didn't know it. So, you know, it was just, there are things I wouldn't have said if I was Tua Tungavailoa as he was trying to be very honest about everything and, kind of blaming himself. He didn't blame anybody else, so he wasn't trying to throw anybody else under the bus. He said it was on me. But, boy, that's just an extra one that everybody is going to have an opinion on. You know, well, nobody knows their playbook in year one. Well, I just think for even the people that are defending him, oh, that wasn't what he meant, that wasn't exactly what he said, whatever, that is not the way you want your franchise quarterback to carry himself. That's not the demeanor that you want to hear out of the guy that's supposed to be the franchise. Well, it's just, to me, that that kind of demeanor is just overall I, is unacceptable. I do, it's I embarrassing. Do, I do have some really good news, though, that this is not comments taking place after the third or fourth game of his second year. And oh, thank goodness. It's just an OTA. and uh, talk. I don't know how they got there. I, well, I where was the follow-up? Does he know the current playbook well? Like, does he, he good now? I mean, do we know? Uh, he need, he need, ask him that by today? the way, he needs to know the new playbook very, very well. He needs to know that thing. He needs to spend time, a lot of it, and get to know it and checkoffs and audibles. You got a lot of experience, man. No I mean you can't the playbook can't give you all the experience he got. He saw he saw everything and he got blitzed and dropped back and wasn't sure. I mean, there there are a lot of things that when they throw you out there and whatever, what was it? I, I forgot. Was it week six, week seven, whatever it was where he finally took over? Yeah, was it the Rams game, right? Was that the game? Yeah, because weren't we scared of him playing Aaron Donald, if, if I recall. But let me get you some text here, Joe. Uh, these are, you know, interesting coming in here. Was looking forward to the interview yesterday. After hearing the comments, I have to put the Tua jersey on hold until I actually see his play. Can't shut the door on the Watson trade after hearing this. 
I got to tell you, a responsibility the organization has, they cannot shut. And, and Really? What's best for the organization no matter what? They, of course. You, you, by the way, you don't think everybody is keeping a close eye on that, seeing if something's going to pop open and something leaks out of the NFL office like, hey, this is what he's looking at. We're going to go ahead and give him the green light. He can play a certain time. Um, don't forget to call us if uh, if if you're looking for deals. And if it's true, this is one of the places he wants to come. They have to. They have to listen. They have to. They got to do what's best for the organization. Hell, the owner's telling them, you have to. What else do you have coming in? Joe, you guys are hypocrites. We want our athletes oh, to be God. honest, and now he's being honest. You're ripping him. I, I'm a hypocrite. I'm a fraud and a phony and a hypocrite. You're gonna blame me for those comments? Is that what you're doing? For, I, I just said, listen, man. I, I would stay away from. I didn't know the. I don't. I've never heard a quarterback say I didn't know the playbook after, in the off season. Yeah, that's not year. good. I just never heard that. That's it, brand terrible. new. Now I've heard guys early on going, I'm still learning this sucker, man. I'm out here. The guys are hurt. You know, I'm doing the best I can. You know, they're they're trying to help me as much as they can, putting on what I can handle. Hey, I went through it. I I went through. I had a roommate that was a rookie quarterback that started in David Woodley. I saw it. I saw what he went through. I saw what he went through, and he put no time into it. Nothing against David Woodley. God, <laughs> God bless him, but it's not a shot. It he, sounds like one. He put zero zero time. He had Bob Greasy working with him, who was injured. And Bob's job while he was on, you know, one of the jobs is like trying to work with David and teach him coverages and what to look for. And, hey, hey, if you got to check off, just watch the safety. Or, and, uh, and David wanted to go like, no, I just want to keep it simple. I wish Bob would. And, and so Bob and I have had a great laugh through the years because I used to get it when we got back to the room. He goes, oh, my God. Bob Grease, he's like a professor, man. I go, yeah, he's a smart guy, dude. Learn from the guy. He can really help you. Oh, man. I, it, it, the game's got to be simple in this first year. I don't know half this stuff. So I got to see it up close, man. And we actually, like like Tua, we won some games. couple yeah. more for you, Joe. Don't crucify Tua for being honest. We're not crucifying him for being honest. We're ripping him for his comments and admitting that he didn't know the playbook. That's fine. I mean, if that's how people are reading into it, that's fine. So that's, I would just be as a leader of this team into such a huge year. You've already, you already got a big old microscope on everything you do. Everything. You're super popular. You're no matter. You do anything at all. You're on NFL Network and ESPN NFL. You every day. You do anything at all. Um, You were popular coming out. Your jersey sells like crazy. Everything about Tua is is popular. So we just need the guy to play well, and I would just stay away from all the junk about what he didn't know last year. I would put a halt to it. I would never mention it again and uh, and move on to what you have now and what you're doing now and, and, and those type of things. That's all. Um, they, you know, Texter points out what you were saying, Joe. They waited till after the bye week. How the bleep didn't he know his playbook? They did. They, I mean, it's just, it's very concerning going into his his second year here, Joe. It's very, very concerning. Well, and, and look, like a text says, to, uh, you know, to a, a being honest doesn't mean he won't be good because most won't admit it. He's not the only one. I don't know, Joe. You played in the NFL. How many guys don't know their playbook? Well, uh, I had a guy who didn't know it. I mean, I, I, I feel bad talking about David Woodley, who's not even with us anymore. We lost him when he was, can't remember, 45 or 46 years old when he passed. But, I mean, he didn't put a whole – I mean, he got – you know, Bob goes down, and Don was playing some Don Strzok, and they, they put David in there, and it became Woodstrock. And – um David, I mean, Don, Don Strzok and Bob Greasy have great stories. He just didn't want to put a whole lot of time into studying the big picture of everything and already made his mind up. Like one read, maybe two, any pressure, gone. I'm, uh, I'm taking off. 
So I this don't. is the fairest text, though, Joe. This guy says no disrespect to Woodley. He wasn't a fifth overall pick and handed the keys as a franchise quarterback of the future. I understand that, but I'm talking about a, a quarterback to start his rookie year. That's okay, all. that's all. But no, but that is that is. Unf- I mean, w- when you look at Tua, guy was brought you in. You asked drafted in the top five. He's brought in to be the guy. Right. And these are these are rough comments to hear. Totally going agree. Going into year two, this is well, not the well, way you wanted to start things off with his first media availability. Well, you can't ask of me the NFL year. Like, I understand, but you guys ask me a question and I answer, and then you go, then you follow it up with, "Well, he wasn't a first round pick." Hey, you idiots! You asked me if if it was a friggin' like if I I said yeah, he played as a rookie. I think we went eight and eight. I don't know how many of the games he played. I can hardly remember nineteen eighty. Don't call the texters idiots. I interrupted you, not that. But I just like you. You're asking me. You ever seen this? I go, yeah, actually, I. I did see it up close. With did Marino uh, know it? Texter wants to know. So did he have a grasp on the playbook? I'm his guessing year? Dan Marino had a pretty good idea. But but so here's the thing: if you're not big on reading, which a lot of people are, like a lot of people don't want to read stuff, and but at least like Dan Marino had a great mentor, great in Don Strzok, like Tua had. With Ryan Fitzpatrick. Don Strock, look him off, Dan. Look him off. You'll freeze him for just, with your arm. Look him off for one second, and you got him. You can make throws nobody else can make. Freeze that safety for one split second. By the time you're friggin' released, the God given release you have, it's over. Uh, hey, 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 just all, all I want you to do when you go out there on this play is watch that one guy. And so, so he learned that way where he could go out and, you know, the talent level. It's, But I think he had a pretty good idea. And if he didn't know, he wanted to know. And he and, he and Don Strzok were together all the time. They had dinner. They had drinks. They had their wives together. They were talking about what he was going to do. Like, dude, what do you think about uh, that's a matchup? He was always into matchups. Said, hey, if Duper's on that dude, he is terrible. Let let Duke run by him. Just throw it up. Make sure you look off the safety, though, so he doesn't cheat over. So I just, like, I used to listen to, like, the only thing, Dan, you got to worry about is keep that safety, look right at him, look the other way, and then come back. So that guy, so even if he's taking off cheating a little bit, he can't get there. So that kind of stuff. I hope I didn't bore anybody with all that stuff. Hey, we got um, a lot more stuff to get to here this morning. We'll come back and uh, – it's so funny, right? Those, those like you're reading too much into it, and the other ones um, that are really getting into this this morning. We, uh, we got a lot more stuff to get to, but before we do, we got a we got a Marlins baseball game today at uh, twelve ten, and uh, it's another big game, man. They got a chance to get back to five hundred. It's been a fantastic story. They can go twenty five twenty five, and pretty good chance today. Pablo Lopez on the mound, won six of eight. Uh, Phillies, they're looking to take three of four from the Phillies, take their third straight series today. And they've been getting oh, from everybody, including uh, a big old at-bat last night by John Birdie. was just fantastic with two outs, fouled off a bunch of fastballs, and then got a big old base hit to give them the lead. And that's the way they've been playing. And I just want to let everybody know, if you can't get to the game today for a little lunch special, cheat out uh, before the weekend, catch a little baseball because they're going to be out of town for a while, no problem because they're going to be coming back and they got a bunch of really cool heritage celebrations going to be taking place. They've got a bunch of really cool stuff that they're giving away. they got great giveaways coming up we're going to be telling you about. It's going to be tough, man, because that Cuban Sugar King with the new City Connect uniform is a tough one to beat what they just did. And, of course, they sold like crazy. But uh, plan on getting out to the ballpark when they get back, man. They're right in the middle of this National League East thing right now. It's been really, really fun to watch. Uh, the starting pitching, finding more guys till they get all their horses back healthy again. But a lot of really good stories going on with this baseball team right now. So uh, don't forget, get on out there, check it out. Go to Marlins.com. You can check out the ticket situation. Got Friday specials as well for you. You can find out what you can get. They got some really cool things when you buy extra tickets on a Friday night. Uh, discounts as well as uh, a lot of other things going on. So make sure you make it out if you haven't to a Marlins baseball game. You're going to have a good time. All right, welcome back. And uh, 
Good morning to everybody. Well, the Panthers out of the playoffs. The Heat trying to stay alive. The one team we can always count on, the Miami Heat, has uh, looked to bounce back, get that first win here in game three tonight. See if they can't get going. And, of course, got a baseball team that is quietly, really playing well, even with some guys out. I saw Marte's uh, back in the minors. Getting a little work. He'll be up soon. Uh, but they've been, with what they have, they got some guys injured. They are still playing really good baseball. It's been fun to watch. Don Mattingly and that group has just done a great job, just done a really, really good job with this group. And whoever is working with the pitchers, um, just keep getting five, six innings out of guys, man. Just uh, nice, nice stories. Just keep rolling along with this baseball team. 12-10 start today for them. And uh, we got to jump in this machine, which is just loaded down with Tua Tungavailoa stuff today. It's amazing, right? It's uh, Well, first things first, um, you uh, called all of our texts. I think you grouped them all in and called them idiots. And uh, there's a few people demanding an apology. I know you're not great at apologies. You usually make it worse. But would you like to apologize? I just It's not very nice what you said. Whoever said, like, you ask me if you've ever had a rookie quarterback. I go, yeah, I had a roommate who was a rookie quarterback, and he had to play I, like a half a season. And he wasn't prepared, and, and they worked really hard. And he got the best. He got Bob Greasy working with him. And he wanted nothing to do with learning. Like, he didn't want to overload the brain. And I was like, dude, let you're getting – like, this guy's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback someday. Let him – he was known as one of the smartest quarterbacks. Let him work with you. And he's like, oh, man, he's just like, this is crazy. Like, it's just going to simplify. I go, dude, they, they run all kinds of different stuff. You got to learn it. And I'm still learning too, you know? And uh, and so you guys asked me, and then, wow, he's not a first round. I get that he's not. I know where, Gre- I, I I know you where and David said that Woodley was drafted. Everyone. All right, then I'm sorry, everybody's an idiot. I didn't mean well, you're sorry for saying it, or you're sorry that they're idiots. Shut up, Holly. Would you? Oh, you just said more. you're sorry. They're idiots. Shut uh, up. Just move on. What else you have? Right. Your apologies lack, my friend. Tua not knowing the playbook is like Rick from Davy not knowing the shopping cart return manual. <laughs> <laughs> really? I thought it was funny. Let let him go, man. Leave him alone. Sugar King jerseys are awesome. Yes, they are. Four? Were they four hundred bucks? Did you tell me? Yeah, there must have been. Did you buy a couple? There must have been cheaper T-shirts, right? I don't know. Usually, are you concerned? That. No, I'm not getting any. Just charge it. Well, be charged. You don't have to pay for it. You won't notice. Like everything else, you charge on that card of yours. <laughs> such, <laughs> you are beautiful. Joe calling us ass clowns is okay, but idiots unacceptable. Idiots not good. <laughs> it's very, it's a little hard. All right, man. Like, I don't know. You listen. It's been it's been that kind of morning. It's been a rough morning. The Panthers got knocked out. Tua said he doesn't know the playbook. <laughs> yeah. The heater down. Now, by the way, by the it's way, it's been a rough morning. That's a bad combination. That's a bad trio right there. You're right. <laughs> Panthers just out of nowhere. I mean, the other day I couldn't sleep because Spencer Knight was just such a cool rookie story in the playoffs, and then. It comes to an end, and then yesterday, I'm watching NFL Network, and I go, what the hell did he say? And we got the two of comments about not knowing the playbook, and then the heat, you know, and people screaming at Jimmy Butler, shoot! You're like, wow, what a hell of a trio we have in this. Time. I want Tampa Bay's problems, man. They got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and. Joe is extra salty today. They want to know if your buddy's back in town. You have been a little bit on edge today, no question. Oh, it's lack of sleep. That was one of the worst so, apologies I've ever heard, by the so, way. Just terrible. I'm sorry. My sorry. This no, 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 no. But no, you, no, you, no. You, no. You Let you me say, just say this. Instead of saying I'm sorry for calling you guys idiots, you say I'm sorry that you're all idiots. That's just It's just the same thing no, over I, and over again. I didn't mean you're that. You're calling them idiots again. So I'm just going to – this is the I'm sorry do with my wife. Hey, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> This is the one the wife gets. Hey, I'm sorry. Does she buy your crap apologies? No. Okay. She does. You're not good at it. No. I mean, some people are better than others. You're the worst. <laughs> I, I ain't going to lie to you. There's one thing about being tired in your 40s and 50s and coming home from these trips. Last night got me. 
And then on top of it, I got in a deep sleep, and my daughter's cat started, like, meowing, like, loud. Like, I guess there was a cat outside or something. And, yeah, it was just not a good night for sleep. So, hey, I'm sorry if I took it out on everybody today. Why don't you have a glass of warm milk and a nice nap today, okay? You know what? You're asking about, you said that about, oh, I might as well grab those Oreo cookies too, man, while I'm at it. Hey, everybody, we're going to have Ron Rothstein join us next. Uh, got a big old basketball game tonight. He tried to get that first win with a crazy loud crowd. We'll be talking about that tomorrow morning as well. So Ron Rothstein will join us next.